Okay, this is from today, 9-16-2013. This is the live Fukushima camera going. And uh, it says 1,400 to 1,500 hours. So, what, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m.? Here we go. Let's check it out. See it first here on One for the Record. Wow, the typhoon's going over there. And there's a, there's a flag going. Right in here. There's a flag flopping around. So we can watch that. Now the winds are going about a hundred and fifty kilometers an hour. Just keep an eye on this. This is live footage of what's going on over there. Let's check it out. There's no sound, but there's a camera. Look at that. Camera's bouncing all over the place. The flag is really flapping around. The bottom right. There it is. Again. The cranes are kind of moving back and forth cables are. Remember, all that's weakened from all that high exposure to radiation and earthquakes and everything else that's going on. That camera's shaking. I hope they don't lose the camera. We gotta see what's going on over there with that typhoon. A lot of movement going on with the camera. Everything's rocking, rocking and rolling. I guess, unless they're having an earthquake too on top of it. Could be a quake going too. Who knows? Now they're saying they're going to get 30 foot high waves. I'll probably do an early show. That way you can see what's going on over there. Because if I post it now, most people won't be watching it anyway. But at least you'll get it first. See, see the first set of footage before the camera gets turned off. <laughs> most likely. Gets too bad out there. They'll probably turn it off. Look at that, this is rocking. Too bad there's no sound. My time is 2.29 2, uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So there might be like a 12-hour difference. 
strange. Shouldn't be that big of a difference. Why, why are they only showing that? They should be up show some different ones. See it first on one for the record. It's bouncing. Camera's bouncing. Hey, we're both watching this at the same time. I, I, you know, this is live footage that's been captured. Camera's bouncing a lot. It's too bad there's no sound. I'd love to hear, hear the wind going by or whatever. really rocking now that winds really blowing look at that little flag down there blowing away whoo whoo it's changing look at that what is that check it out is that steam here comes the rain it's it's probably picking up all that radi radiation and just whipping it around. And when the storm leaves, it's going to leave with a bunch of radiation in it. So heads up on this storm. It's sucking up all the radiation, too. Look at this. Wow, look at this. Ooh. Raindrops hitting the camera lens. Get off of there. What is that? Wow, this is intense. We're actually seeing some, some footage here. That storm's really coming in. It's a typhoon. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at that crane. Right in the middle. Whoa, what was that? I guess it's getting distorted from the rain. It's moving too.
It's going. I guess if the radiation gets too high, it might even warp time. Because it seems like it's... We've got 11 minutes right now. And this footage goes into, I think, 15 minute intervals. But yeah, if the radiation gets high enough, I would assume it could maybe distort time over there. That's weird because it's not going to come across in time, I don't think. Still another three minutes of footage. Less than that now. And it's, it's supposed to be 15 minutes long. It's barely moving. That's the little, little thing at the bottom showing how much footage there is. It's weird. We'll see if it keeps going. If it does, I'll have to pause it and then continue it. Yes, Max. Very strange. It's not even half over. We're not even at the halfway point. Yes, this is kind of distortion. Wow. Well, maybe this is an hour footage. That's right. Fourteen to fifty. Usually goes in 15 minute intervals. Weird. Okay. When it runs out, I'll, I'll pause it. And maybe we'll continue. This is Those are 15 minute intervals. Goes by pretty fast. Where's the stop? Where are you going? What? What is it? We gotta keep an eye on this, make sure everything's okay. Ow. No, out. What do you mean out? You just went out. Why are you going to go out again? Oh, I'll be alright. Here, it's going to... 
All hands on deck. Oh, I've been telling everybody, keep me posted on the typhoon. Fukushima, the sun be coming up very soon there. From what I understand, I'm getting emails all over. They're getting hammered right now. And let's talk about this. Number four, yeah, yeah, that's a major concern, but much, well, not much bigger now, as big. You know how much water is rushing down the mountains going across? Yeah, they think they had groundwater problems before now, as you as anti-nuclears advocates, as we all know, this is nothing new, but I'm telling you right here, right now, this is going to, this story, it's ironic, we have the Fukushima awareness contest yesterday all over the world, there's a lot of great ones, it's ironic, you want to talk awareness? This story is going to go crazy this week, this is the thing that's going to be, because the water that's going to rush down there, it's going to inundate them so, and there's monitors finally over there, this story is going to bust loose so hardcore. Japan's science and technology policy minister is getting ready to brief the UN's nuclear watchdog on the situation at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant. Workers have been trying to stop the radioactive water that's building up at the facility from leaking into the environment. The latest result from Fukushima is the nuclear power plant suffered a 100% liquefaction. The core completely liquefied. There's nothing left. There's no hulk. There's no remaining collapsed core. The core completely liquefied. Ichita Yamamoto is going to attend the annual session of the International Atomic Energy Agency General Conference. The gathering opens on Monday in Vienna. The minister is expected to explain that Japanese leaders see the radioactive water problem as the most urgent challenge at Fukushima Daiichi. He is expected to say that the tainted water is affecting 0.3 square kilometers of seawater inside the plant's port. As we believe these men to be manipulative and extremely dangerous. Luckily, they are also very disorganized and there is a chance they may never be able to ever take any action at all. He is expected to say that the tainted water is affecting 0.3 square kilometers of seawater inside the plant's port. But he'll likely point out that no significant levels of radiation are being detected in waters outside the port. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. But he'll likely point out that no significant levels of radiation are being detected in waters outside the port. Yamamoto is planning to note that engineers have been facing unprecedented challenges in their efforts to deal with contaminated water and decommission the crippled reactors. We imagine that in the infinite universes parallel to this one, you are still staring dumbfounded at this video. We'd like to interrupt this freaking program in your holiday weekend for the biggest breaking news, the whole Fukushima thesis. This is it. This is it. I've been, I cannot believe it took me this long to dig it out. All the activists, I just shows you how Google and the IAEA is using a machine and throwing false information, paying out and posturing the machine. This is the most massive news, even bigger than when Fukushima happened. Here it is, and all I can say to Greenpeace, you scumbags. All I can say to the microbiology, you scum. As here's this test, 10, 1,300 miles out, full of season, and they kept it cover up this whole time, and finally a whistleblower has leaked it out. Here it is. This is the most massive powerful freaking nightmares. Everything I've been saying, the greatest conspiracy in human history is, listen, I met a guy that I grew up with that I have friends with I haven't seen in decades. He's Kevin. I live in Alaska. I'm in the fishing industry. And I didn't freaking, he says, we had a long talk. He says to me, he's been doing this for 20, he works for the biggest freaking Alaska fishery up in the world. He says, when the northern cod come in last year on the northern cod kish, he says they had little red burns all over them. And so I says, well, you obviously, and he says, oh, no, 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 I've been doing this for 20 years. He says, I know what a parasite is. I know what freaking the scars off the machines are, are in the nets. He says, no, these were burns. And this is a guy that has so much integrity that I know, and I've, I grew up with him. He, I mean, one of the most brilliant people I ever knew in my entire life. One of the most honest people I ever knew in my entire life. I take this. Gilded in gold, cast in concrete. As this study that comes out, this is the biggest news in your lifetime. This is thousands of times the GMO. This is thousands of times the Wall Street scam. One isotope, one single isotope will give you cancer. As I'm full of AML leukemia fighting for my life, as my gene was mutated via my father's, as it comes years later. 
I'm telling you, stay tuned and stay tuned. This is massive, massive, gigantic news because it's where the wind blows, it's where the water flows, and all you people that don't understand my thesis and how I go and what I'm doing, this is about information into the conscious, through the ear, so it can come out the mouth. And, you know, if we had, if you take Chernobyl out of the equation, Fukushima, we got a pretty good track record on it. You're so in denial. One single isotope can kill you. As cancer freaking rates are off the fucking hook, they're going exponential post Fukushima. Oregon, you took a major, major freaking hit. Look at these new maps. This is the biggest story of Fukushima right here, right now, and it shows you how hard we have to work to even dig it out. To the whistleblower who re finally released this, oh, you are uh, the biggest humanitarian maybe in the last 50 years. Stay on tuned. Program, as you know, the uh, keep uh, constructing the tanks. That's a limited solution. So we need to stop at first the groundwater systems. So maybe we can do that. But uh, the another problem is the uh, we will have uh, highly contaminated soil systems after stopping the uh, groundwater, and that will be the next problem. And uh, the Fukushima uh, nuclear plant accident will give us the series of the problems of the radioactive waste. And for instance, the, uh, if we can successfully the clean up the wa contaminated water, we will have uh, highly contaminated uh, ion exchange uh, resign or the sludge or the filters of those kind of things. So cities of the uh, contaminated nuclear waste is a problem, will be the problem. What is the solution? Because you told me in the pre-interview we really don't know the full situation there. Is there a logical solution? I know the former special advisor to the Three Mile Island nuclear disaster in Pennsylvania in the late 1970s has advised pipe it out into the ocean, this excess water. Is that a viable solution? And what ecological damage would that cause? Uh, my understanding, I'm a, a kind of expert of that uh, safety assessment or environmental impact assessment of the nuclear waste. And uh, from my viewpoint, scientifically or biologically, that will not be a big serious problem. But the problem is the uh, social psychological problem. So many people will feel the, uh, very, very anxiety or the uneasy about this situation. So, for instance, the uh, a slight contamination of the seafood uh, may, if uh, it is uh, found in the near future, there may be the very big panic of the uh, the, the market and neighboring countries. Uh, maybe so, but uh, in fact, the contamination itself will not be so serious. The problem is a social psychological problem. So rumor or the reputation damage or those kind of things. What is the long-term viability of nuclear power in Japan as lawmakers discuss possibly breaking up the monopolies, the ten regional monopolies that have been operating the power systems? What is the likelihood that nuclear power will continue in Japan? And a second part of this question is with China's ambitious build-out plans of nuclear power, what lessons should they be learning? Yeah, if we look back at the human history of the nuclear development, the almost of all accident was caused by, were caused by the human error. We need to uh, put the emphasis on the not only technological safety, but also uh, organizational and uh, institutional uh, cultural safety. This is very important. We should reform the nuclear industry and the nuclear regulation systems totally. That, that is uh, only one solution to if we hope to keep the uh, development uh, uh, utilization of the nuclear power that is inevitable and uh, the same thing i would like to advise chinese government they should put the much more emphasis on not only the the technological safety but also again organizational institutional cultural safety how to train people to cope with the risk management or the nuclear waste management and uh, how to create the uh, safety culture this is very crucial did tepco not have that I'm so sorry to say you are right that TEPCO has been losing their safety culture. That is the ultimate uh, reason why we, ha uh, yeah, we had such a serious problem, uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. That's my understanding. What is the future of nuclear power in Japan as they debate that? Yeah, it depends on the uh, how uh, large, uh, so, 
proportion of the, the energy use of the, for instance, the renewable energy. So how successfully we can uh, realize that. So it depends on that. And also we should ask uh, nation, people, uh, should we ask, uh, go forward with uh, nuclear or not? So this is a very important uh, moment uh, we will have. But before that, again, we should rebuild the trust from the people to government. Without uh, creating or uh, rebuild that, we can know uh, nowhere we, sh we can go. So that is my understanding. Is Japan right now, the way it is managed, the, the nuclear power plants, are they able to cope with a, the potential of a second disaster if the leaks widen and the radiation rises? Are we prepared? Uh, yes, uh, so we should prepare, and but, but because uh, so this is not the only one single issue. So series of the problem we will face. So beginning the uh, the with the uh, this uh, contaminated water. Next one is the highly contaminated uh, ion exchange uh, resigned or those kind of things. The third one is the uh, uh, decontamination soil. This is another problem. And uh, finally, we will face the high-level nuclear waste and the spent fuel problem. We should isolate those kind of things uh, more than 100,000 years from the human environment. Mm. This is a very important and a very uh, serious problem for all countries who are promoting the nuclear power plant. Including here in China. Hiroshi, of course. Uh, thank you. Workers at a utility company in Japan are preparing to power down the only nuclear reactor that is generating energy in the country. The unit is due for regular inspections. By Monday, all 50 commercial reactors in Japan will be offline for the first time in about 14 months. Kansai Electric Power Company workers will soon begin lowering the output of a reactor at the OE plant on the Sea of Japan coast. The unit will stop generating electricity later Sunday night, and it will come to a halt early Monday. Utilities in Japan have asked the Nuclear Regulation Authority for approval to restart 12 reactors at six plants. The regulators began safety assessments in July. They say the process should take about six months, depending on the situation. The approval of local municipalities is also required before reactors can be restarted. So at this point, there is no date for when any of the reactors will be back online.
now we're at I'm moving forward because some time went in between this the last upload now we're at 9 16 20 13 1500 hours to 1600 hours here we go The clouds were moving by real fast. Let's see what's going on now. Remember, the winds are like at 150 kilometers an hour. Going through there. Now it seems like they're in the eye of the storm or something. It's kind of quiet. But as we know in Florida, it's the back end of the eye. That does the most damage. Let's see. Max, get out of there. What are you doing? Where's that flag? The flag's down here. There it goes. It's right there. Look at the clouds going by. Look at that. 150 kilometers an hour. Ooh. Wow, look at it go. He got. I guess these sections are th in 30 minutes long a piece. Ooh, the camera just got shook. Look at that coming in. Wow. We'll, we'll keep checking on it. Off and on. I'm Diana and today is September 16, 2013. Here are your news updates for today. Uh, there has been some breaking news that there has been a shooting, 12 dead, more injured in a naval, Navy, naval base shipyard in Washington. I'll give you more updates on that. The internet is, is going up and going down. so. I'm going to give you what news I can. Good thing I stayed up real late and I uh, attached a bunch of stuff on Fukushima. So here we go. The Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond. Scotland experiences four seasons in a day, lashed by 100 mile per hour winds, gusts. Heads up! That's a crazy one. Scotland experiences four seasons in a day, lashed by 100 mile an hour wind gusts. Scotland experienced all four seasons in one day yesterday as the first storm of autumn swept across the country, bringing chaos 
to the country's roads, torrential rains accompanied by gale force winds gave way to sunny periods before the wet weather returned. The Kerrigan Arms were hit by gusts of 100 mile an hour wind with snow anticipated last night and the fourth road bridge was closed to high-sided vehicles after wind speeds of 69 miles an hour were recorded. So heads up on that. What's really going on? Maybe we're having a weather war with, with some of these countries. Kind of strange, don't you think? Okay the watchers watching the world. Luckily I got this up. Nothing else is loading. I hope we load this show so I can uh, get it out there to you. That's why I'm doing it so early. Japan nuclear free at last. Reactor uh, Japan nuclear free as last reactor shut down. Here's another one. Earth's axle precession regulates life-supporting system of oceans. Oh, we're going to say that. Okay, maybe I guess that's true. But that's in lieu of Fukushima and all the radioactive material being poured into the Pacific Ocean. Let's not say it's the Earth's axle precession alone that regulates life-supporting system of oceans. Oh no, let's not blame it on that. Let's blame it. Let's give credit where credit is due. Japan government, TEPCO, Westinghouse General Electric, TEPCO, and all, and all the media who didn't report on it sat on their hands. Alrighty then, let's give credit where credit's due. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> I have no news right now out of Fukushima. E and E news has not changed yet. I don't have any updates. So I'm going to give you all the information I have. I got a lot late last night though, and you can actually see what's going on with the wind blowing over by the reactor. So stay tuned. Be prepared for anything. Check your local news. If you want to hear updates on what's going on at the, I believe it's a, at a naval base, shipyard, wherever, wherever that happened. Alrighty then, heads up, crazy things are still, oh, and another heads up I saw on the news, uh, EBT is down. I don't know if it's the money side, but I guess the food stamps are down right now. That's why you need to be prepared for anything. And for Rush Lombard to say, I heard him too for a second, uh, for him to say, oh, well, where's all the soup lines? What do you think the food stamps are, Rush? What if there were no food stamps? People would be standing in the soup line. Don't you know that? I can't stand, stand the uh, narrow-minded, this generation that has totally done this. To us. Not technically the baby boomers, it's the one right before, or the very, very early baby boomers, and the generation basically, basically my parents' generation, and part of the grandparents' generation, but mainly the parents' generation, mine. Not really the baby boomers have totally uh, done very bad things. I don't care what anybody says. That's where I track it down to. Alrighty then. Alright, take care. Be prepared for anything. Be safe. Also, if you want to um, save money, let's say that you usually uh, do your gardening and stuff and you don't want to use your regular water, just leave a, leave a couple waste baskets outside if it's going to... Try to stay away from the rain. 
But if you're not t touching anything, you know, it, I don't even know if you can trust the rain. Forget that one. Only if it's an emergency and you got to save on water. Then go ahead and you, s you know, open, uh, open the lids to the giant trash can when it rains. Gather some rain water. And or put some, put a couple waste baskets outside. A couple containers. And that way you'll have water to water your plants. Don't use your uh, house water anymore. You can cut down on your bill. Also, for those smokers out there, if you take your cigarette butts and you squeeze, you crunch them out, you know, you do this, right? You get a lot of tobacco left in the in the butts. Go buy some dollar rolling papers. Get some scotch tape, or even medical tape is better. The plastic medical tape, and save save a save a few of your uh, your your filters, and then you get one of those little rolling machines is worth the investment, and then you recycle your butts. Takes about three four of them at the most, and then you got a cigarette, and it tastes almost the same due to the fact you're using your cigarette filter. All right, from just you know. I'm just letting you know how to save money. I never saw that before until I got to Florida. <laughs> they were re-rolling cigarettes. But, but, on, but to make it taste like your Marlboro 100s or whatever you're smoking, make sure you save a few filters and then you, you roll the cigarette, better with a machine, then you, ta then you, then you jam it into a filter, you tape it, if you have to just squeeze it together so you got enough drag on it or whatever you need to do but now you might get almost have a half a pack out of that you can actually get squeeze a half a pack if you just save your butts out of, out of one pack alrighty then take care and I'll see you again there. that'll save you a lot of money if you can go if you could and, and if you have to whenever you run errands Start leaving them at home. You know you got them at you know you got them at home. Also, you can also take a you take a glass of water. Listen to this, because you need a glass of water, a scissors, and what you do is you take a couple drags off your cigarette. You cut. Be careful. Don't let don't let the end of it fall anywhere else. You should have a plate down too, just in case, with a cup of water on it. Cut the tip of the cigarette off. That way, when you go to relight it, it doesn't taste like it's a relit. Whatever you want. I forgot the word for that one. That way, it doesn't taste like it's like a used cigarette. As long as you take a scissors and you cut the part off that had had burned already. Alrighty then. And that cigarette might last four or five times before you go on to the next cigarette. So that might cut your smoking in half and save you money. But if you can go to the store without them and know that they're at home and drive the car without them because you you know that they're at home, as long as you know you have them, try to stretch out. You know, it's time to start getting healthy now. We have to get healthy now. That's it. It's the end of it. And if you, and if, here's one thing I've always said. In about 20 minutes, if you smoke a cigarette or not, the feeling of wanting a cigarette will go away for a while. That feeling will go away. So when you're jonesing for a cigarette, if you wait a full 20 minutes without panicking, then then you, you that feeling, that urge to smoke will go away. If you smoke or you don't smoke, it'll go away. Alrighty? Take care, be safe, be healthier, and I'll see you again on the uh, flip side. Be prepared for anything. Stay tuned. Lots of news. I'm attaching a lot. I want you to take care of yourselves. All right, now we're at uh, 1,600 to 1,700 hours.
how fast the clouds are going. Wow. Look at that up here. What are you doing? Did you eat all that food? Don't eat the cat food. I'm going to get some, some uh, roadie. Stop. Let's go night-night. They'll be calling you a radical. All Hans on deck. All, I've been telling everybody, keep me posted on the typhoon. Fukushima, the sun be coming up very soon there. From what I understand, I'm getting emails all over. They're getting hammered right now. And let's talk about this. Number four, yeah, yeah, that's a major concern, but much, well, not much bigger than that. As big. You know how much water is rushing down the mountains going across? You know, they think they had groundwater problems before. Now, as you as anti-nuclears advocates, as we all know, this is nothing new. But I'm telling you right here, right now, this is going to, this story, it's ironic. We had the Fukushima Awareness Contest yesterday all over the world. There's a lot of great ones. It's ironic. You want to talk awareness? This story is going to go crazy this week. This is the thing that's going to pay because... The water that's going to rush down there is going to inundate them so, and there's monitors finally over there. This story is going to bust loose so hardcore, and I would like to say this to all you Keystone Pipeline protesters who are organizing for your protests next Saturday. Yeah, I support you, but look, are you kidding me? You kidding me? You call yourself fucking environmentals, Sierra Club, Greenpeace, no friends of the earth? You fuckers make me sick. You don't do shit. How can you fucking, you're going to get all the... Hello, Fukushima. Yeah, Keystone's horrible. The golf was horrible. But compared to Fukushima, really? Really? What the fuck? How gone are you? Are you really that ignorant? This is the greatest ecological disaster by a billion fucking times in the history of all humanity. This is a million fucking BPs. This is fucking thousands of Chernobyls. This is fucking Love Canal times billions. Where the fuck are you fuckers? And I will say this to all you activists and everybody out there, remember this. Forbes, do not let them off the hook. CNN, they're going to have to report. Sanjay Gupta and the black and yellow journalists, and I've turned black. Black and yellow journalists is not refusing to report, is intentionally downplaying. This is fucking accessories to murder. This is malice. It's the crows right here. I call them a murder of crows, and I've got names for all these crows here. Sanjay Gupta, Forbes. All you back in your, I've kept track the whole time. I have a list. We know who you are. Not who just misinformed and poorly reported this. Oh, no. You fuckers who intense. And I've turned black and yellow journalism. Post ignorance. Out in the street. That's where we'll meet. On YouTube films. Right here. This is very, very real. This is scary shit big time right now. They're being hammered. This story's going to break loose over the next few hours like you never seen. All hands on deck. All, and we have to be focused. All anti-nukers, be focused. The people who spin this, the people that try to come back into this fold, who intentionally downplay the ABC, the NBC, the CBS, the Reuters, the BBC, Forbes, National Geographic. As I put up my comment the other day, very cordial, nice comment. As they dog and pony, oh, the fish are safe. They took everybody's comp, left everybody's comp, but mine. They take me that down. You really that afraid of me? You're really afraid to debate me, all these, some woman says, well, oh, they, you, they, you obviously couldn't get a word. How the fuck would you know? This is a YouTube camera. See have anybody else in the fucking room? You pathetic fuckers, Greenpeace and fucking Sierra Club. Wall Stegner would spit in your fucking face. I've let Bobby Kennedy off the hook. I used to go out, I went at it with him right there, telling me he couldn't make a pimple on his father's ass. But I love him now. 
because he took on Pandora's promise. And do not forget Pandora's promise. And Habe, as I've been told, as my brother lived in Fukushima for years, he was a model there, and his wife told me the other day, they pronounce it Fukushima. Habe, fuck you, Habe. Try spinning this, motherfuckers. This water is going to rush over this fucking 900 something days of contaminant straight to the Pacific. This, I mean, we are annihilating. The sea lion's dying. The starfish dying. Keep going to Nile. The humans dying. And you want to get fucking million fucking fundraising mark? You're no different than a politician. Whatever gets your fundraisers, whatever fucking incites your base, huh? Fuck the truth. Fuck you. All hands on deck. You know who you are. Stand to it. Now we're at uh, 916. No, oh, 0900 to to 1000 hours 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. backtracking a little bit Ooh, it's down here. Something's going on down here. Taking a look at earlier, I couldn't get to it before. Probably too many people on there. Look at that. The clouds are going in a different direction. Jumbled around. Look at that. See that the clouds are going in reverse. From what we saw, this is earlier. in the morning I couldn't get on it till just now to uh, get the ear earlier footage This is from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is even earlier. Look at it go. See, the clouds are going in a reverse direction. Then, or, then be, what we were watching later, we're actually out of, out of sync with how, how it's going on here. We're going back in time to check it out. And these are even shorter. That's only like three minutes long. So they're leaving out some stuff. Or something, something's going on. I 
These are only three minutes long. Now we're looking at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. So these are an earlier look at stuff. What is that? Go check it out. What's that running noise? Look at it coming in. Actually, it looks like it just 90 degree angle went off. It's another direction. It's going from right to left, and then all of a sudden it went straight ahead. Kind of curved. Very strange. Now we're back to 1600 to 1700 hours. And you see how the how the wind has changed directions from earlier. Look how fast this cloud's going. Look at this. This is from C-H-U-G-G-K-O-L-E's channel, Typhoon Man Yi Japan. On some uh, pretty fantastic footage here of, uh, looks like Typhoon Man Yai, which has made ground in uh, Japan. It's packing, packing winds at 144 miles per hour. Looks like it's heading right up to, right up in through Fukushima there. And that doesn't look too good. From what I'm hearing and gathering right now, they've got people, uh, quite a few people that they've got evacuated. I'm not quite sure where. Towns. I haven't researched it all out that much. I figured I'd get this out there, though, and get a good, good screenshot of that. It looks like they're going to have some problems. 